Hey everyone, welcome once again to Sammy Mora FX and in today's video I'm going to be talking about delta or delta volume to be more precise. Now delta is something if you are not using in your day-to-day -day trading it is really going to open up the world and really make it more of a clearer picture of what's actually happening in the market. Okay, now there are things on TradingView that there are like indicators on trading view that claim to be delta but I would disregard them because they use tick delta and tick delta or tick volume as a whole is nowhere near as accurate as just the real volume. So if you don't have the real volume or don't have access to the futures market or the CME data feed then I highly suggest that you use uh, an indicator called cluster delta. Um, it's called cluster so C-L-U-S-T-E-R and then delta. And that's for uh, MetaTrader 4 and 5. Just Google them, you'll find it. It's about $7 a month. It's really cheap. I'm not sponsored by them, by, uh, by, uh, by the way. It's just, I genuinely use them and they're pretty good. And they actually give you the real contracts that are being bought and sold. And they have a bunch of other indicators, but I don't really use them. I just use their Delta one. Um, but feel free, you know, to play around what else they offer. But back to Delta. So what is Delta? If, you, if you're completely new to the idea of what Delta is, well, it's actually, a, I believe, a Latin term and it just, it's basically the difference. Okay, so Delta is the difference between buyers and sellers. So, why is it, number one, why is it when you're trading the Forex market, you can't see the true buy and sell orders that are coming in, right? Why is that? That's weird. In the stock market, you can see it. It's completely open. Okay, the futures market is open, but the Forex market is decentralized. You cannot see the live orders. But the lucky thing is, the futures market, you can. And, in the, and essentially, the futures market is what drives the Forex market. If you compare the futures, like the Euro futures, to the Euro US dollar, they are identical. The, the graph is identical essentially okay um every time it, uh, the euro the futures go up the euro goes up and and so forth right they're exactly the identical so the futures market you can see these contracts so this is what's important right so the delta is the difference between buyers and sellers so say the buyers bought 50 contracts and the sellers uh sold 30 contracts the difference between 50 and 30 is 20 20, uh, so the delta is 20 to the buyers, right? That means there were 20 more contracts purchased in that minute than, uh, you know, contracts sold, right? Very self-explanatory. I think you can, everyone can understand that. Really easy to grasp, but, the, but it's not that easy to trade, sadly, <laughs> all right? Naturally, you would think, well, whichever side has more delta should be the side it will the market will go to, right? That just kind of makes sense. If more people are buying, the market should go up. If more people are selling, the market should go down. And that is logical to assume, but it's n it's just not true, sadly, in the forex or futures market. Okay, and the reason for that is something to do with two different market participants. Okay, you got aggressive. Uh, I'll write this really quick and passive. So what are aggressive uh, participants and what are passive participants? Aggressive are people who are hitting the ask and bid. Okay, so I'm always aggressive. Uh, when I enter the market, I'm always aggressive. Okay, and I'm assuming you're probably also an aggressive buyer or seller when you enter the market, because as long as you hit you know, the, the buttons that literally say sell or buy or buy or sell, whichever way around, you're an aggressive uh, participant in the market. You're someone who's aggressively getting in at whatever price is available right now. That's an aggressive uh, participant. Then you've got passive participants. Now, we're all passive participants too. You just don't probably realize you are, okay? Uh, if you ever set a stop loss or a take profit and that gets hit, Guess what? You're a passive participant too. So passive buyers or sellers are basically uh, limit orders, right? And it can also be to enter the market because you can set limit orders like when price gets to this price, I want you to sell or I want you to buy. That's a limit order, right? 
but generally speaking, we're also going to be talking more. It also includes stop losses and take profits. Okay. Whereas aggressive um, is generally people entering. Do you know what I mean? Like aggressively, I want to get in now. And aggression is kind of what moves the market. Okay. Aggression, not necessarily moves the market, but aggression is needed for the market to really go somewhere. Okay. You can't really move the market vigorously with just passive orders. Okay. The market might move a little bit, but it won't really, you know, go and, and you get those, you know, big pips through passive uh, orders. It has to be kind of more, there has to be that aggression too. So how does this tie in with Delta? Well, this is why Delta isn't so black and white. You've got to look at Delta like a tug of war, right? Imagine there's a rope and you've got a bunch of people. So you've got the left team and the right team here. Now, if I told you on the left team, there are 50 people and on the right team, there are only 20 people. And I asked you to make a bet, make a educated bet right? Put, put 50 pounds on it. Which team is going to win? Now, most people, 99.9% .9 of people, okay, are going to say, well, the left team, they've got more people. Most likely they're going to overpower 20 people on the right team. True. Very true. Yeah, that is ultimately true. But it but really, all you know, is just there's 50 people and 20 people. You don't know what kind of people. You don't know anything really about there's no other data to really support that, right? This could be 50 children versus 20 big burly, you know, bodybuilders. Now, if I told you this is 50 children versus 20 grown men, bodybuilders with big muscles, okay, who are you going to bet on winning? Well, you're most likely going to bet on the right side winning, right? So this is the same as how the market works. Don't just look at the quantity because the quantity doesn't necessarily tell you, hey, this side's going to win. You've got to also look at how the market reacts. You've got to look at the weight behind it almost, right? And the way you can view that, the way you can see that is by what the market actually does. For example, let's make this really, really easy. Okay. Say for example, the market's got a nice little uptrend and we're about here now and you're seeing on the Delta. Okay. You're seeing really big buy deltas appearing. Okay. Really, really big buy. Lots of people are buying really aggressively and the market say they started buying here really aggressively and the market just does this. What is that telling you? Now, most people will be like, well, look, the we're in an uptrend and there's loads of buyers stepping in. It's going to keep going up. That's naturally what you would assume. But you have to look, the Delta really can only tell you what's happening in that minute. Forget what's happened in the past. What's happening right now is what the Delta correlates to. It doesn't matter if it, you know, what happened two minutes ago or four minutes ago or five or 10 or whatever minutes ago, what is happening in the minutes that the Delta is being printed, these high Deltas? Is the market actually moving up? Well, in this case, no, the market's just kind of moving sideways but there's loads of buyers. What is going on? Well, think about that logically for a second. Now, if there's loads of people buying, but then market's not going up, what, it, what is, why is it not going up? Well, probably and most likely and almost guaranteed that whatever region they, the market's at, whatever price point the market's at, maybe there's a uh, resistance level or something, right? There are sell limit orders. So remember all these limit orders. Okay. Now these could be take profits. These could be, uh, you know, people actually wanting to enter the market by adding sell limit orders manually, but nevertheless, there are a big chunk of sell limit orders. So every time people are aggressively buying the, their orders just being whoop, absorbed, taken out, just, just, like nothing's happened. It's like a bulletproof vest. Lots of sell limit orders against buy orders. It's just like a bulletproof vest and vice versa as well, right? The market's not going to keep going up. It, it needs so much more. If it, if it can't go up using all this, right, all this extra volume and it still can't push up, it's going to need even more volume, much bigger volume in, it, in order to break that. Now, 
you got to ask yourself logically for a second, would you want to buy in that situation? A, we're already quite high up. B, you can clearly see now that all the people who are buying are not getting any results, right? The market's not actually pushing up. And the only reason if you were to buy now, you're, you better hope that loads of other people join you and, and just really, you know, completely flood the sellers in order to break that area. That's quite a high risk, right? Generally speaking, I would not want to buy in that situation. Okay, if anything, I'll start be looking to sell because all it's going to take are these sell limit orders, they're absorbing all the buy, uh, aggressive buy orders, but all it's going to take is a few aggressive buy, uh, sellers, sorry, start selling and the market's going to flood down, right? It's going to really be able to push down. So you have to look at, I like to call it like effectiveness. I don't know if that's a real term or not. So like effectiveness, for example, is what's important. And I, how many contracts, if it's taking loads of contracts and the, and the market's not moving in the direction of the delta, that's very low efficiency, low effectiveness. There's a lot of resistance. You can see that, okay? But if the market is moving very, like quite easily at relatively low delta, that's really high effectiveness. Do you know what I mean? It's really efficient, the market. There's a good chance it's going to keep going. As long as more people keep piling on the orders, the market's going to keep going, right? It doesn't necessarily need high quantity for the market to really shoot off. It just needs that perfect storm of low resistance from the opposite side and just that little push, you know, that little push for, of aggressiveness and the market can start going. Okay, so you really want to be looking, keep an eye as how the candle forms, okay? If you're seeing the candle form, you know, really like jittery and every time it moves up a bit, it bounces back and it moves up and bounces back. You know, like I'm sure you've seen it where, where you know, a candle will go up and then it'll bounce down and it'll go up again, it'll bounce down, and it'll go up and it'll bounce. And it's just not, it's just not going. It's not clear. It's not smooth. It's just not moving up. Do you see what I mean? It seems to always bounce back every time it, it gets into that zone. That is sell limit orders just absorbing these buyers, eating them up, chunk, like, and you will see that on the uh, depth of market, the dome. Now you can get the depth of market on MetaTrader, uh, but it's, you would need a futures broker account. Um, I'll probably make another video one day on how to get that, uh, but yeah. That's essentially what you want to be looking for. Don't, don't just look for high volume must equal, you know, strong trend. That's not true. Sometimes low volume can have a very strong trend. It's just about how much resistance there is from the upper, other side, how effective they are. So let's take a look on the chart. Let me give you some real world examples so you can actually see what I mean. And unfortunately, when it comes to Delta, a lot of it is as how the candle forms as well. So I can't show you that in, real time if it's already played out, but you can still see, you know, what I'm at, what I'm talking about. And it's something you really just have to look and study uh, live as, as the, as the candles are forming, as, as the market's moving. So let's take a look right now and I'll show you some examples. Okay. So let's take a look at Delta volume as a whole. Um, right. What you want to look at number one is something called a trap. Okay, traps are great, but we're also looking for absorption. Okay, so look at the delta volume as a whole. You can see how it's quite small, right? It's quite low, yet the market can move up a bit. Quite low, quite low. And then we get this big delta to sell. Now, what is actually happening? Is the market going anywhere? No. The next one, it starts pushing up. That's Something's happening here, right? It's telling you right here in this region, sellers are trying to sell. Look at these sellers. They're trying, they're really being aggressive. 174 extra contracts, 111 extra contracts, 93 extra contracts. But is the market dropping? Has the market managed to break this area? No. So all that's, it's obviously telling you this is where they're being absorbed. So the likelihood is that although the delta is way more in the favor of the sellers, the buyers seem to be, you know, in control here. 
right? And the market does push up, okay? Does then eventually push up, but you never really see the buyers step in with much aggression, okay? You never really see a big delta for the buyers. They don't really ever step in with much aggression. And ultimately, the sellers take over again, and eventually they do manage to really break through that area, okay? Through that whole area, they really managed to break it, but look how much volume it took to break through it eventually, okay? And they did. But then they kind of lost steam as well. And then the buyer sort of took over, and whoops, I hate the way MetaTrader loves to jump like that. Um, and they kind of consolidated. I mean, this is quite early in the morning, so this is probably not the best time. Let's go when the banks are a bit more wild. But here's like a trap. Here's a perfect example of a trap, right? Look at this, but the market doesn't go anywhere. Huge amount of buying, extra buying, 316. Naturally, you would assume, okay, the market should start going up quite dr like drastically. What's it do? It doesn't. It just doesn't go up. And it doesn't take much sellers for them just to easily drop it. The sellers are so easily able, very effective, the sellers, so easily able to make the market go down with very little volume. Whereas the buyers, they, they have no chance, right? They're, they're struggling. Takes them all that just to just to achieve this little move? Nah. And the sellers are just so easily able to go down. Do you see what I'm saying? So you gotta kind of you can see it more clearly in certain examples. Sometimes it's not so clear cut. But let me try find. So then you always have something like a trap. So this is like a trap. You see how this is just a lot stronger, the delta here? right? But then instantly it kind of reverses. It's a trap. They're trapping sellers. They want people to sell here. And when all the sellers tra are trapped, they just take their stops, okay? Instant reversal. So you're kind of looking for, how can I put it? You're kind of looking for, yeah, absorption. It's very hard to explain absorption just by like, here's a good example, right? Look at this. Look how strong the sellers are. Look how aggressive the sellers are, right? They were really aggressive up here and they actually do move the market down, great. Then they get even more aggressive, they're selling, but the market's going up, no. Nope. They start getting more aggressive selling. Buyers get quite aggressive as well. And then sellers try again, no, no, we're really gonna do this. Look, look at how much they're selling, but the market is not moving. They keep trying and trying and trying to break this area, but they're really struggling. It's gonna take a lot for them to break it. Essentially, the buyers never really get aggressive, but the buyers are quite easily able to push the market up a bit. Do you see what I mean? Till eventually the sellers will probably take over again and push it down. So you're looking for that really aggressive kind of heavy selling or buying, but the market doesn't go anywhere again really aggressive. Does the market start shooting down loads? No. Okay, what happens a few candles later? The buyers step in and are easily able to move the market quite a bit with very little delta in comparison. That's a good sign. Hey, this, this is going to go up, right? It just takes a few more aggressive buyers to step in and the market will easily go up. So, that is essentially absorption, okay? That's essentially how you should read the delta, okay? Be very, I love to trade the trap setup because it's great. In fact, I think I traded this exact setup, trade history. Yeah, there you go. I, I went short here and I got out here, right? That's exactly, because again, why did I get in here? Because the buyers, huge aggressiveness from the buyers, instant reversal, it's a trap. They're trapping these buyers up here, okay? So they push the market down, they even retrace, but they're not gonna allow the, they're not, they're not gonna push the market any higher than where they trap people and then it will go down and eventually, it just eventually does just keep going down, right? I got out there, but you know, in theory, you could have kept holding. But um, that is essentially, how you trade it, okay? Delta is like a tug of war. It takes a while for you to um, become good at, 
takes a while for you to train your eyes to see, but it doesn't. It's not that difficult. Um, don't just look at the quantity. Look at actually what is happening in relation to the quantity. Okay, that is where the magic of delta comes in. So I think that's pretty much it. There's very little more to, I can talk about delta. Really, um, I wish there was something more elaborate I could say, but that's really how you use delta. You know, it, at least on the candle, the candle basis, that's how you use the delta. So I wanna thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video um, and kind of got a better idea of how to use the delta. Uh, really important, like I said, it can tell you a lot. Um, just trading the delta alone, you could be very profitable if you're really disciplined and good with risk management. Uh, but yeah, essentially, that is how the market works. Do you see what I mean? It's not about quantity necessarily. It's about how much resistance there is. You know, it's like two armies, right, at war. Now, one might have a bigger army, okay? Army A might be, you know, 50,000 men, and Army B may only have 10,000 men. But if, if Army B has a really strong brick wall and loads of bulletproof armor and tanks, okay, that are bulletproof, Army A, despite having more men, they're not gonna, their bullets are not going to do any damage to Army B. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's, it's about resistance matters a lot, you know. And when I say resistance, I don't mean like typical support and resistance. I mean literally pushback from the other side, okay. And those are passive uh, participants, okay. Got to try and start learning how to identify aggressive and passive participants, okay, in the market. And... That's the best way I personally, like without using proper order flow and, and footprint charts, um, that's the best way to do it in my opinion. So I hope you enjoyed it. Keep your eye out for more videos as I've got so many more to come uh, and record. And uh, yeah, hit that notification button, subscribe, leave comments, like, all that good stuff. And I'll see you again very soon. Take care.